Howdy, folks. This is Mary with High Song Grows, bringing you Farmer Friday, where I recap some of the things that have happened during the week. So here we go. Superior Pearl Racers, donkeys in the street, all kinds of cute things going on today, and live music in the park. Come on down, all day super downtown Superior. Yeah, you're just gobbling it up as fast as you can. What are you doing? You thinking that's all right? Huh? Oh, I'm going to try this end. No, I'm going to try the side. Yeah. The storm wants to get in there and eat, but Bambi's a bully and usually pushes her around, so she doesn't want to get too close. But she'll get over there eventually. I always put out more than enough. Yes. When Bambi goes to chew her cud, Storm can get in there and get her feel. Y'all are too funny. Y'all are too funny. Come on. You gonna come get some dinner? <laughs> you girls are so funny. Yes, you are. What are you doing? Hmm? What are you doing? Having the zoomies. Oh my goodness. Yeah, watch out. That leash will kill you. Okay, did you get it out? Huh? Did you get your zoomies out? Okay. Okay. I'm really glad I drained the water hoses last night because they were only predicting 36. And here I am, nine degrees colder this morning. Hoo-ha. Time to feed some chickens. Hi, chick chicks. Hi, girls. These are the youngest pullets. They're still down here in the little hoop coop by the house. They eventually they will go to the big layer house up in the back. But for right now, I am feeding them um, a really nice layer feed and a little bit of scratch and uh it's just gonna make my life easier to let them stay down here because nobody else is getting this layer feed right now nobody else is laying and some of them are gonna go meet some dumplings pretty soon and the rest of them probably won't lay until spring so they can eat a cheaper feed until then and in the meantime, just these younger girls that are actually paying their way in eggs can have the good stuff. 
All right, I'm looking at the ground. Um, there's a few stems, but there is not nearly the waste that I had before because it's what I really like about this hay feeder is because it's got this tray here. It's catching all the leaf and all the small stems and things. So we aren't having a huge pile of hay on the ground. Awesome. <laughs> Good morning. It's Friday. I just realized I still have my headlamp on from doing chores in the dark this morning. <laughs> How funny is that? After a while, I don't even feel that it's there. I'll go put that away in a minute. Um, it was only 30 degrees this morning, which is warmer than it has been some days the last couple of weeks. But for whatever reason, I feel really, really super cold this morning. And so I've kind of been hugging my little heater and hanging out, doing some things inside the house, waiting for the sun to come out. And uh, this morning I decided I was going to make some cheese. So I'm warming up a pot of cheese, a pot of milk. This is about a gallon and a half. And as you can see, it came out of the refrigerator, so it's still pretty cold. Um, I discovered in going through my things in the freezer that I still had one packet left of this Chev starter. This is from the New England Cheese Making Company, and this is a super simple, very easy cheese. Um, and it doesn't take a lot of time watching a pot or anything like that. The most time consuming is I need to warm the milk up to 86 degrees. And I do use fresher milk for this one so that it's got a milder flavor rather than um, like my, my, um, Oh, I want to say cultured, but that's not the right word. Um, <clears throat> okay, what's the right word? Um, clabbered. <laughs> that was the word I was looking for. I better have some more coffee. Anyway, this is a super easy um, recipe. You warm the milk up to 86 degrees. You put the, the starter packet in and let it sit and rehydrate a, a couple of minutes and you stir it in and then you cover the pot and I just um, wrap it in a towel to stay warm and you let it sit there about 10 or 12 hours and then um, you ladle the curd into a colander with cheesecloth and to drain and I'll let it drain 8, 10, 12 hours until it's the consistency I like which is not too dry, but not real watery. And um, you and you put some salt in it and you're done. Or you can get fancy and add um, chopped fresh herbs, dry herb seasonings. Um, I have taken this to like potlucks and things and done different flavors like one, I've added chopped dried fruit and nuts with a little honey. Um, I've done, and maybe some nutmeg or something. I've done just honey and nutmeg. I've done um, different kinds of herbs from the garden, like garlic chives and parsley and a little oregano or thyme or something. So you can do all kinds of different things with it, and it's great on bread or crackers or whatever. I have even made cheesecake with this cheese, just the plain salted cheese, and substituted it for cream cheese in the recipe for a baked cheesecake. It does come out real well, other than I will say drain it longer than you would normally so it's drier, otherwise you have to really bake it extra long to evaporate off the extra moisture. So. That's part of what I'm doing this morning. I'm going to go get rid of this headlamp and find my spoon and store this milk. All right. That pot of cheese is set. And I don't have to look at it again until tonight. And the sun is coming out. It's still a little bit cool out here. But the sun's coming out and warming things up. And my first order of business is I need wood for the wood stove. So I have some old pallets I'm going to cut up 
and uh, fill my wood boxes. there Freya cat you might fall in the bucket especially if these girls get excited and jump around <laughs> it's not like there aren't pans of water all over the yard she could go drink out of <laughs> Alrighty, it's like probably after 11 I turned on the water watered the goats and now I'm hooking up the water for this bed of garlic and, and the garlic's coming up really nicely through the the straw mulch that I put down. But uh, we haven't had rain, in, real rain in weeks. So the ground's getting a little bit dry. So I'm gonna water these guys. They're on a drip system. So we'll let it run a few hours and soak it really good um, while I'm doing some other things. The Lyric in downtown Miami, Arizona. A lot more than a soda fountain and a coffee shop. Yeah. <laughs> I um, discovered that my right knee was not liking me very much today. Don't have a clue what I did to it. Might be too much digging a rock rake in the other day. Um, it feels better now than it did earlier today, but I kind of took it easy after I got all that wood cut and the boxes filled up. Ran some errands and got some other things accomplished that I might not have got done if I had tried to keep working outside. So that's okay. And now it's time to do chores. Oh, I just let Digger out and just realized that I did not bring the girls any minerals this morning like I had intended. I got sidetracked somewhere along the way. So uh, we'll go drop some hay and get them some minerals. Yeah, what are you doing? Huh? What are you doing? A few minutes ago, he was barking and growling at the fence. But he's done really good. There is a loose place he could really get out if he really tried. But he's done really good staying inside the yard. Good boy, Digger. Alrighty. Yep, y'all needed a little more copper. <laughs> I gotta double check if I ordered more. If not, get it ordered. <laughs> Storms at heat, so she's at the gate yelling because she wants to get out. And that's no dice this year. What did you say? Huh? What are you blathering about? Because you're in heat? I know. No dates for you. No, no dates for you. Oh, dang old Bambi came up and banged in the storm just as I was slipping out the gate. And she got out. I'm sorry, Bashful, but uh, she's not coming in, honey. Nope, she's got to go back to her pen. Come on, Storm. Yep, come on. Okay, that wasn't too bad. She didn't fight me too hard walking back. I just couldn't film at the same time. Bambi, quit being such a booger. And I'll just have to remember to shut the gate on the milk area um, when I'm going in and out so that she can't get all the way up to the buck pen again. And you need to stop it and quit being such a booger. I'm taking down this tarp that uh, I've had over Digger's pen all summer. We're getting cool enough that I don't think he needs the extra shade. So we'll just uh, get it folded up and try and figure out where we're going to put it. I'm just going to empty Digger's water trough and clean it out because it's getting a little grungy. But there's a 50-gallon tub and it is full and I can't move it. So I got a bucket. I'm going to bail it. Days are just routine and same stuff, different year. <laughs> so 
Oh, I just let Digger out and just realized that I did not bring the girls any minerals this morning like I had intended. I got sidetracked somewhere along the way. So uh, we'll go drop some hay and get them some minerals. Yeah, what are you doing? Huh? What are you doing? A few minutes ago, he was barking and growling at the fence. But he's done really good. There is a loose place he could really get out if he really tried. But he's done really good staying inside the yard. Good boy, Digger. Alrighty. Yep, y'all needed a little more copper. <laughs> I gotta double check if I ordered more. If not, get it ordered. <laughs> <laughs> Storms at heat, so she's at the gate yelling because she wants to get out. And that's no dice this year. What did you say? Huh? What are you blathering about? Because you're in heat? I know. No dates for you. No, no dates for you. Oh, dang old Bambi came up and banged in the storm just as I was slipping out the gate and she got out. I'm sorry, Bashful, but uh, she's not coming in, honey. Nope, she's got to go back to her pen. Come on, Storm. Yep, come on. Okay, that wasn't too bad. She didn't fight me too hard walking back. I just couldn't film at the same time. Bambi, quit being such a booger. And I'll just have to remember to shut the gate on the milk area um, when I'm going in and out so that she can't get all the way up to the buck pen again. And you need to stop it and quit being such a beggar. I'm taking down this tarp that uh, I've had over Digger's pen all summer. We're getting cool enough that I don't think he needs the extra shade. So we'll just... Uh, Get it folded up and try and figure out where we're going to put it. I'm just going to empty Digger's water trough and clean it out because it's getting a little grungy. But this is a 50-gallon tub and it is full and I can't move it. So I got a bucket. I'm going to bail it. A lot of my days are just routine and same stuff, different year. <laughs> so, I guess some of it's probably a little boring. Today we got five eggs, which is okay. I'm getting five to seven from the seven new girls, so that works out. I think a lot of life is just repetition, same stuff, different day, dishes, laundry, trash. You know, you go to school, you go to work, you do whatever it is you do, and you do it most days of the week. So, it's kind of the same on a farm or a homestead. You got to get up and do all your chores, and most of that's the same, but it will change with the seasons. It'll change with your different kinds of livestock. Um... You know, some some days are a little different and a little entertaining, and other days are just the same and boring. <laughs> I think that's just kind of life. Alrighty, I emptied my ash bucket so I can clean out the stove so I can make a fire. Um, that looks like a lot, but that pile is like four feet tall and about six feet long and probably six feet wide at the base. So that's not really that much ash for this size of a pile. Now I do not put ashes directly on my soil because our soil is very alkaline here. And that is not a good thing to make it worse. Um, when I lived in East Texas and we were on a very acidic sandy soil, I did put ashes directly in the garden, but not here in the desert. And now it's time to go turn the water off. So I will go uh, set this ash can by the uh, 
front door, go turn the water off, go clean out the stove, make a fire, get ready to milk. Oh, and somewhere along the line, feed the dog, the cats, and the bashful boy. <laughs> Same stuff, different day. That's not exactly how we get on a milk stand to milk, honey. You gotta get all the way up there. Come on, no, come on. You gotta get all the way up there. I do not know what the issue is. I took the rubber mat off in case it was bugging her. I don't know. I fixed the board that was loose. You're just being cray cray lately. No, you're holding everything up, right? Yes, you are. You're you're holding up the whole shebang. Everybody else wants their snackies, and you're holding up the show. Come on. I have no idea. Really? What is this about, huh? You are just being so crazy lately. What is your issue? Huh? What is your issue? You are so silly. Okay. I gave her uh, a little boost and uh, she tap danced a little bit. And I got her head locked in, and now I think we will be good. Anyway, um, hopefully you enjoy this week's shenanigans, and we'll catch y'all later. Okay, y'all just thought we were done. <laughs> Let's see what our cheese looks like here. Take the towel off, get the lid off. And we do have some curds and whey in there. Awesome. Okay, so we're going to see how well this is set. Remember, Chev is a soft cheese. Oh, that's just about perfect. It could be a little bit cleaner break. And especially if I was making a hard cheese, I would really look for a cleaner, firmer curd. But um, I think this is going to be just fine as a batch of chef. So now we're going to drain it. Okay, what I have down here is a five gallon bucket that I've cleaned and sanitized, and my cheesecloth in a colander. And I just poured boiling water over that just to make sure that we were nice and clean and hadn't got contaminated by any of anything floating around in the air and uh yes it's going to drip on the floor which is why my floor looks like that imagine that and now what i'm gonna do is let's see let's see if i can make it easier for you to see it I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't know what I'm doing here. Okay. Maybe I can do it one-handed. Let me try. All I'm going to do is just ladle the curd into the cheesecloth. Yeah. Well, maybe I didn't stir that good because some of this looks much firmer than the rest. Or maybe some of it cooled off too much. I don't know. But that's all I'm going to do. And, you know, sometimes the, the way backs up. You know, just kind of move the cloth around a little bit to help it drain a little faster. You can hear it running down into the bucket. So I 
ladled all the curd in and actually towards the end of the pot I just kind of dump it all in and I'm going to kind of pull up the corners and the sides and kind of give it a, a couple of squeezes because if I just twist it like this it will put some pressure on it you can hear all the whey running out and that will kind of help keep it from uh, running all over the floor. I already got a few drips. <laughs> and that's okay. I'm just going to let it sit like this overnight. And if I have time in the morning before the farmer's market, before I have to leave for the farmer's market, I will salt it and pack it into containers. And if not, it can wait till I get home. It'll be just fine because this time of year, the house is really cool. Well, this time of year, the house is really cool, bordering on cold. And, um, you know, unless I've directly got a fire going or the heater on so it, the cheese is not going to spoil or mold or anything sitting in a cool room to drain um, extra long and that's fine if my cheese gets drier than I would like it then I can either stir some of the whey back into it or I can add a little dab of milk or cream or something and that and just adjust the texture that way anyway we are finally all done for today so y'all have a good night and a wonderful week ahead catch you next time